you compare this to our founding fathers. Yeah. Our founding fathers were shopkeepers, uh, innkeepers. Uh, they were farmers. Yeah. Many of them very, very successful, by the way. Yeah. And when you think about what they risked going up against a tyrannical government like England, yeah. they risked not only their financial lives, but they risked yeah. their lives as well. They were willing to give up it all mm -hmm. in order for this fight. Now, I would imagine a situation like Miles Gua, yeah. that you're in China, you could conduct business as usual, you're yeah. making billions of dollars. You know yeah. what? You 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 hold your nose and you fill your bank account and you say, but he didn't do that. He yeah. he rocked the apple cart so yeah. much. Why? Why so bold to do it? Well, this is a great question. I mean, if he didn't have to do this task, which is the most daunting task to take down the CCP, he could enjoy a great life. I mean, he was already the most successful businessman in China, but right now he lost everything. All of his personal properties, he lost both of his parents in China, and during the Tiananmen massacre, he lost his um, younger bro uh, his younger brother. His, he, the policeman shot his younger brother to death right before Mao Zedong's eyes. And Mao Zedong was also in prison in China for more than six months, you know, right after the um, massacre. And he lost everything. Today, he claimed bankruptcy in the United States of America because the CCP bought, uh, brought more than 76 lawsuits against Ms. Mao Zedong. All they want to do is to destroy Mao and the movement that he's been leading. And to do it, and we're talking with Nicole Tsai, she's with the new federal state of China, uh, founded by Miles Guo and Steve Gannon, uh, Steve Bannon as well. Um, so, so to do it, they want to destroy him, right? And they yeah. want to they want to bring him down, um, and they want him back to the United States. So, in all, I mean, excuse me, back to China. So, in order yeah. to do that, mm -hmm. it looks and appears like they've tried to infiltrate the Department of Justice here in the United States yeah. to get the United States of America to deport or, uh, or send him back yeah. to China. Yes, absolutely. So this happened uh, right after he um, began the whistleblower uh, movement and the CCP immediately uh, arranged a special operation which entailed um, a former DOJ employee. His name is George Hagenbotham. He was actually a senior congressional staff employed by the Department of Justice. So this person walked into the CCP's embassy in Washington, D.C. and accept tens of millions of U.S. dollars and agreed to do the dirty bidding for CCP inside the United States federal government agencies, specifically the Department of Justice. And he was trying to uh, lobby the uh, Trump's White House and Department of Justice returning Mr. Mao Zedong back to China. So, and there were two also very prominent power brokers involved in the scheme, and that was uh, Elliot Brody and Stephen Wynn. And Stephen Wynn, probably uh, people have already heard about, he's a Las Vegas like um, casino mongol, yeah. and he got the license uh, granted by the CCP to do business in Macau. So a very a significant part of his business revenue came from the CCP controlled territory in Macau because these people have been compromised. And uh, so they both pled guilty to DOJ's uh, charges of violation of the Foreign Agent Registration Act. But people seldom heard about these stories from the mainstream media because the CCP has successfully controlled America's mainstream media. And that's why you're not gonna hear about this story. That's why people need to tune in uh, Grant Stinchfield. Mm -hmm.